Welcome, everybody, to our March Austin Tug. We are broadcasting live from the Yarbrough. Uh, this is a, a nice uh, hotel, uh, nice uh, library we have here. You can't quite see it. You can see it from the outside here in my picture, but this used to be an actual movie theater back in the day, so they've re-renovated uh, it. It's pretty, pretty cool inside. So those that have joined us, welcome. Thank you for coming in person. Uh, this is a hybrid event, so as you can see, we are live in person. We got some people still battling traffic, and we are also broadcasting um, over the internet. So here, let's go ahead and get started here. Before we get started, I always like to thank uh, the folks that bring uh, the tug to you each and every month. Uh, this is the members of our advisory council. Um, they work hard every month uh, planning the events, coordinating the events, lining up the speakers, doing all the logistics behind the scenes, making sure we have all these webcams here. Thank you, Homer. If you guys saw this, uh, it's the most over-engineered production we've ever done here, but it is awesome. It is awesome. So thank you, Hope. Um, but these folks work really hard to bring you these uh, amazing events and speakers every month. So thank you very much. If you're interested in joining our council and you have a flair for marketing or just event planning or just like networking in general, please come um, come talk to one of us, talk to myself, reach out, and we'd love to have you join our uh, our council. Um, so we got a great event planned for you today, um, a high level agenda. I'm going to do a couple of housekeeping events and talk a little bit about um, our uh, some some events we have coming up. And then also we have uh, Dan B uh, Bolinson, who is a senior manager at, um, whoops, at sorry, typo there, uh, Bally's. Uh, and uh, he'll be giving a presentation on uh, Game On, your dashboards can do more with extensions and Python. And then afterwards, we want to have a happy hour uh, here for those that are still uh, still with us in person. So as a reminder, this is a hybrid tug. So this will be both in person and virtual. So if you're in person, please participate. Um, if you are virtual, we encourage you to turn on your uh, video and make it a gallery experience for the best uh, gallery view for the best experience. Um, of course, observe Zoom etiquette. Um, and but we do want this to be interactive. So um, please uh, participate in the chat window. If you have any questions for our speakers, we'll be collecting those at the end for Q and A. So uh, please go ahead and uh, direct message uh, Homer, and he will go ahead and collect those. Those uh, questions for the Q&A session. Um, so announcements, we have a slew of tugs coming up April through June. Um, we have a, a bunch of speakers already lined up for you, so it's going to be fantastic. Here are our dates. Um, we are taking a break in July. It's hard to believe I'm already talking about a summer break. It seems like the year just started, but we uh, typically take a one-month break, and then we will reconvene in August. So that's sort of what our calendar looks like uh, coming up. So um I also want to send a quick reminder, if you have not registered, please register for Tableau Conference. It's right around the corner. It's going to be in San Diego this year. It's going to be April 29th through the 1st. It's going to be amazing. If you've never been to Tableau Conference, I highly encourage it. It's a great way to um, uh, see uh, all your favorite speakers live from the community and um, also just get the experience and see all the cool stuff that Tableau is coming out with. If you cannot attend, please at least join the web sessions. They do a fantastic job at streaming everything online. So. Again, that'll be April 29th. Um, one thing I want to plug is our Slack community. So we here in Austin like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, collaborate and help each other out and just do general networking. So uh, we have a Slack community. We'll go ahead and put that link in the chat here so you guys can join today. Please go ahead and sign up. Um, we do everything from uh, general community event announcements, like when our next tug is, to everything from talking about inbound speaker topic suggestions. So please, again, um, go ahead and join our Slack. All right. So with that, um, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Dan Bolinson, who's the senior manager at Baker Tilly, um, who has 10 years of experience in data analytics. He is an expert in Tableau extensions and the API. And today he's got a, a fantastic presentation he's going to do. Um, he is a Tableau data dev ambassador. So he's got a lot of uh, wisdom he's going to share with us today. And his presentation is called Game On. Your dashboards can do more with extensions and Python. So, Dan, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me on the, through the Homer? Am I good? Yeah, great. So, so thanks, thanks, everybody, for making some, some time for me. and really, really appreciate uh, the awesome tug for, for carving out some time. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Tableau extensions, specifically how you can build Tableau extensions with just Python. Um, but before I start, has anybody got experience with Python or Visual Basic or 
Um, maybe R if people dove into scripting at all in their past? Not so much? Okay, well, I think I'm here to convince you that it's for you too. Uh, if you've written an if statement, which I suspect everyone, have you written an if statement? Yeah, so that's code and that's programming. So I think uh, I'm here to convince you that uh, you can that this is for you too. So uh, my name is Dan Bolson. Uh, I've been working with Tableau since about 2015, um, primarily with manufacturing and distribution companies, a lot of work in supply chain. Uh, we really dove in with uh, with some of the mapping capabilities that uh, the Tableau offers. And in the past sort of four years, we've really dug deep into extensions. Uh, that and we'll talk more about that today. But um, you know, in the last, so that's been a real focus area for me personally. Uh, and I've been talking to a lot of tugs as part of the, uh, this. Uh, data dev ambassador to, to talk about this topic with other groups around the country. And I'll be talking at the conference too, so I'm really excited about that. So if anyone is at, uh, able to attend the Tableau conference, find me. As I said, my goal today is to convince you that you can build an extension. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the end of it, you'll agree with that. Uh, so first off, let's answer the question. Am I not? Oh, I'm not. Thank you. No? There we go. All right, thank you. So the first question is, what are Tableau extensions? So the Tableau extension framework is something that Tableau offers to let us do more without leaving Tableau. So one way that we think about it, and the way that we've thought about it to really start our journey down this Tableau extensions path we're on, has been that our very best dashboards give people insight. So success for us is when we can give people that aha moment that helps them make a better decision based on the data and the information that we're putting in front of them. Whereas when we integrate that with extensions, we're giving them the capability of making those decisions that we want them to make without leaving that dashboard. And I'll give some more specific examples of that, but really what that means is starting to like connect to other different systems that organizations that we work with have in play, be it like a Salesforce on one end or their ERP on the other. Uh, so really it's about letting people just take that next step uh, from their dashboards. So some of the examples of what you can do with these is interact with third-party APIs. So that's really like connecting to databases and writing back to data or connecting to, again, some of those other systems that might be in play at an organization, being able to connect those into the Tableau uh, in different ways. A big part of what we try to do is to build business processes right into the dashboard. So uh, one example, just to like give a little bit of a sense of that, is we have a dashboard that we our client serves to their customers to give their customers a sense of their on-hand inventory for the types of products that they like to buy. And on that dashboard, we give them ability to order. So it's that, it's that adding that button that lets them, again, take that next step if they do want to lock down some of that inventory uh, without having to leave their dashboard. Uh, and so that's really a key, is helping people take that action without navigating away. And so, yeah, a big part of this is write-back functionality. So letting people interact with that data in different ways and sort of turning it into more of like a two-way conversation with that data as opposed to just that, you know, viewing it, they're now able to interact with that. And a big part of that, too, is helping different types of customized visualizations and interactivity types. So to talk a little bit about how I got started on this, uh, I attended Tableau Conference in 2019, and that was really when extensions were first released. Uh, and I thought they were great. Like, it was really, in, you know, as I just described, they really do offer a way to do more. And we've been working with Tableau for some time, and really we're looking to take that, uh, take that next step. And so this really seemed like the perfect solution. Uh, so I spent Tableau conference trying to crack that, and really failed. I couldn't. It was not. It was messy. I wasted most of that conference in a, behind my laptop trying to figure it out. Uh, and the challenge there is that you know the extensions are a JavaScript API, which implies you kind of need a web development background and you need to be able to stand up web services and and that's just you know that was not me i'm i'm, I'm a, my background's analytics uh, that's what i've been doing and so that was a it was a bridge too far and so we didn't give up we kept pushing away and uh, there's another tool that i'll talk about today it's called anvil and anvil offers a full stack web development using just python so what that means is that there's python running uh, in the client, which means that we can use it for connecting to the Tableau extension API. And I'll, that's really what I'm here to talk about today, is how can we start to build out extensions using just Python? And so we played around with that and had our first success. That was really, really exciting. Uh, and so from there, uh, we started to do some stuff and really failed and failed again. 
weren't there yet. And and the reality is that that API exposes a huge amount of depth to what uh, what's going on in that dashboard. And it was really a lot more than we needed at any given time. And so what, from there, we you know kind of grown, grown through and uh, built out a, a library of tools that let us do the most common activities that you want to do when building extensions quickly and easy. So what, where that's left us is we're now building Tableau extension or Tableau dashboards as data products with just Python. So these are like full-fledged um, tools that our, our clients can use. And so we're pretty stoked about that. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I think I'm here to tell you a little bit more about how we do that. Uh, so what we've really learned on that journey is that Tableau extensions are really powerful but they're not the right people's hands. And by the right people, I mean the people building the dashboards. I think Tableau talks about you know, community-driven analytics and self-serve analytics. And so I think that our belief is that by putting extensions in the hands of those same people, that's really going to be the key to unlocking a lot of those other use cases that are out there and that are really powerful uh, that can't be done with just Tableau. And so with that, we think a simple API is required. And so the T-Rex jacket is an API that's open source that we manage. And that is an a open source API that abstracts a lot of the key things that you'll want to do with, with Tableau extensions. And I'll give some examples of that later today. Um, but first, to give a couple of concrete examples, I wanted to share some, some use cases for how extensions uh, are in play. And so Really, they come down to enriching data with additional insights and embedding Tableau in business processes. So I'm going to cut over to some of those. Um, this here is a dashboard that we have uh, with our client, uh, who is a manufacturing client, that, uh, let me just get Tableau going. I'm going to restart right before we started. So this is a manufacturing client that wanted to track their variance. And this is pretty common in, in our client base. Folks are setting targets, and they want to know how they're doing against those targets. And if they're missing those targets, they want to know why. And so this is a dashboard that we developed to help them understand that. It's, you've probably all seen or made dashboards like this, where we've got our targets, and we're tracking to those, and we're explaining differences in a tornado graph here. So if you haven't seen tornado graphs, it's a really nice way of showing uh, how differences are accumulated. So we just take the absolute value and rank it that way. So we can get to see where exactly uh, those differences are coming from. And now here on the right, we have an extension. And so what this is doing is we're actually able to then capture with the, from the user the reasons for that. So when we see this graph here, we see that some are blue and some are orange. And if you hover over, we've got an explanation here. So we know that the reason this customer uh, missed that target is for a reason customer canceled. Um, and so what we are then able to do is to ask people every month to go in and basically explain their variance. So when I click on this dashboard, or uh, when I click on this uh, data point, I'm now being prompted to give a reason for that explanation. So in this case, maybe it was I lost new business. This is a pretty short list, but in practice, it's you know, the, whatever the range is that we want people to be pinning those differences to, we're sort of asking them to, to you're, you're asking them to enrich that data by telling you what happened there. And that then uh, is going to be saved so that we can get this Pareto of what are the key reasons that we are missing our target. Um, and so as I, I can refresh this data now, and we'll see that this, um, this orange is now going to switch to blue because we've explained that variance. And so what the task is we're giving people on a monthly basis is to come in every month and explain the variance. And over time, we start to get that additional insight into why we're missing targets. And from there, start to be able to take action. So what's going on here? We have an extension over on the right. And underneath this extension is a data table that's recording the data that the user is inputting. And this, extent, and this dashboard is then connected to that same data source. Uh, and we'll, we'll show exactly what that looks like uh, in a little bit. And in the room, is there any questions before I, before I move on to the next example? OK. Um, this is another example we have. This is an image classifier. So this is uh, uh, something we built 
uh, to sort of prove this out. What this is is it's a connected to a Python model that's going to classify an image we upload. So I've got a couple of different images here. Um, and this is a Python script that's running in the background that's connected to our extension. So from our dashboard, uh, if my computer loads, we will select an image and then basically push it through our dashboard to that Python script that's going to say, hey, what is this thing using uh, neural net? So let's see if this is going to load. <laughs> no kidding. You would think that accessing downloads would be an easier task. Oh, man. No, it did not. Wow. All right. Well, maybe we can move on to our next one then. While we wait for my file explorer. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so I have here a picture of one of my cats. They're very cute. We are going to upload an image in within our dashboard, uh, and we see that it's thinking. Fresh horse. Seems we got to do that process again. Uh, it's on a, not this one, it's a different one. Yeah. But it, so it, it, the script can be deployed anywhere and then connected through, uh, through Anvil to be run through this extension. This is bold. Try to do this again. All right, let's move on. Um, this next extension that I wanted to talk through, um, really is more focused on the business process. So, what we have here is a extension uh, for a client that does uh, medical device manufacturing. And so they're selling to doctors and physicians and it's a pretty regulated environment. So this is a summary of um, basically activity that they've identified that appears to be in violation of sort of some of the rules that their sales force needs to comply with. And so the sales organization is me measured in part against these different uh, metro against these rules to basically say like, are they staying in bounds or is there a pattern of out of compliance across those specific individuals? But in some cases, the activity is legitimate or for whatever reason, uh, there's, a, there's a good reason for that activity that's been flagged but is in practice shouldn't be marked against them. So in monthly meetings, uh, folks can go through with their employee and if there is an exception, then they can uh, select that metric to determine that it is um, should not be included in the uh, against them in those metrics. Let's try this thing again. And what why they go download if you excel and that's definitely an option. Um, but I think what we're trying to do is to put these into an environment where they don't need to do that. They can do that entirely from the dashboard so that there's not a need to maintain Excel work pets. And then as they're making changes, those changes are being reflected in the extension uh, or in the Tableau dashboard right away. So there's no need to like re-upload to Excel or to, you kind of knock that out of the process. Yeah. So those were a couple of different examples of how we use extensions with some of our clients. Um, we also have an example that I won't share today, but um, that's connected to Salesforce. So here we have an, a, a bunch of uh, different opportunities that are being measured against whether they've been visited recently. So whether the owner of that opportunity has made an update or otherwise reached out to the client. And depending on when that opportunity needs to close, there's expectations that those sales folks are reaching out to the customer in some, with some frequency. And we're flagging that as to whether or not they're, they need to take action, basically. And so this is, an, uh, this is then a dashboard that the sales organization uses 
to keep track of stale opportunities. And as they're going through this, they can click on an opportunity and we'll pull that data from Salesforce on the right and allow them to then make an update to say the opportunity status or to log a new task or to log an event that took place uh, from that dashboard that then is going to be updating Salesforce by their API. So again, the theme here is that we're trying to integrate some of the activities that people might take into the Tableau dashboard. So how does this work? Uh, I think broadly speaking, our, we're trying to create insight with our dashboards. We're trying to create a call to action for somebody to have to do something. And when that call to action is, takes place, then we need users to make a decision. So oftentimes, this is asking them to input some information into a form. In a lot of the business processes, it's kind of that simple, where, where I used a couple of examples. The Salesforce opportunity is one. That customer order form is one. The variance explainer is one. In all of those cases, we're, we're putting information in front of somebody and asking them to enrich it or to modify it. And so usually, that type of form-based entry is really what we're talking about. That data then gets persisted, and that persistence of data depends on the specific context. Um, it might be a separate data source, or it might be updating the source data. And that really is a decision that gets made extension by extension and, and use case by use case. So the tool that we're using is Anvil X. And so as I said earlier, Anvil is a full stack web development framework that lets you run Python in the browser. And so using that, we're able to build extensions with just Python. It gives us the ability to build those web forms that I talked about, build those UIs using like a graphic interface. And it gives us access to Python in the browser. So for us on our team, who, you know, again, are coming from analytics, Python is the most popular programming language in the world right now. And it really is because it's relatively easy to learn and offers a pretty simple way of interacting. So for us, it's really, really powerful uh, to be able to do this with just Python and not have to involve some of the other aspects of uh, what this would take with the traditional web stack framework, HTML and CSS and JavaScript and yeah, yeah. And so what we saw there is Tableau running a dashboard. And under the hood, there's an API that's connected to Andal's Python code. And so as I was going through, I made a selection, a Python function got called. I highlighted something, a Python function got called. I opened a dashboard, a Python function got called. And so when, when all, it's this event-based architecture that really is, uh, boils it down to just reacting to events that lets us then uh, you know, pop up a form, capture that data, and do something with it. So, some of the key things to understand about Anvil X is first that it is not an extension. It's a way of building extensions using just Python. Uh, it provides a way to store data, and we'll talk about that. Uh, it can be run for free in Tableau Desktop, um, or they've got a SaaS platform. Uh, and it's certainly not the only way to build extensions. So everything I've talked about here about extensions is, you know, that's true no matter how you want to build them. It's, and we'll, as we start to talk about different strategies for persisting that data, it's also true no matter how you choose to build extensions. But I do think Anvil X is the easiest. So there's two, I should gotta type this. There's two main ways that we think about uh, dealing with data for, and the first is to update it. It's kind of the most obvious one. That Salesforce example I shared is just that. You know, We are taking some data and we are writing it back. We're, in that case, by API, we're updating the opportunity. And that is very convenient, it's pretty powerful. It's also uh, something that enterprise security usually hates. There's a risk associated with that. And it requires you to have access to that source data in the first place, which in, I would say, most of our use cases is not really, not really uh, going to happen. And so the other way is enriching the data. And that's, I think, what we'll focus on from here forward. Uh, it's a way to parallel another data source so you have some way to join that in with your data or to blend it in using blend relationships. So you're then capturing this other set of data that lets you do more and enrich that data set without modifying the source. And that's really, really important. I think that you know, for good reason, not touching source is usually, pretty, is usually the right idea. But it's still, uh, by capturing some of these other data, 
uh, it's still pretty powerful. You mentioned the idea of just like capturing it in Excel and that's totally valid. Like, I think that is sort of the same idea of what we're talking about here. It's just uh, trying to get it directly in the loop so you don't have to, you know, be re-uploading Excel on a routine basis. Uh, and so when we're sitting down to build Anvil X apps, uh, the first thing we want to do is identify the use case. So what is it that we want our users to be able to do? Uh, once that's done, we have to answer this question of are we going to update the original data or are we going to enrich and layer in that new data? Uh, and I think, you know, again, the examples we'll talk about today are going to be to enrich the data. Next, we'll build the capture form, and then we're going to tie it into the dashboard, usually the selection event. And so that's what we'll do next. Um, this here is a dashboard that many of you probably know and love. It is the Superstore dashboard. Um, and our objective is to take this and instead of just tracking uh, the total sales, we want to track variance against target. And so there's two things that we've done here. First, uh, we have here on the right our extension, and we have a set targets button that's going to pop up a window for where we can actually establish those targets state by state. So maybe we'll say we want to update the targets for uh, Texas. And this is like really just like we would be doing in Excel, but we are, you know, that's going to be then applied automatically. So once we've got that done, we've updated our data, and that's going to be available now to our dashboard so we can refresh our data source and see that update. What we want to do now is to start capturing those reasons for the variance, that example that I provided earlier. And so the step one is to pull it into Anvil. Um, so this is Anvil. Um, it's a, as I said, it's a way to build applications using Python in the browser. Um, and on the left are some of the key tools that we'll use. So our app is the different uh, pages that we have. So we have a home page, which is what we're going to focus on today. We see right now it's pretty well blank. Uh, and this is where we want to build our UI. We also see we've got data tables. And so this is a really handy way for us to be able to start capturing and enriching that data. So I can, for example, add a new table. And I can, maybe this is, I've already got it built, but let's say variant explanations. And from here, I can start to add the columns that I need. So I might need to keep track of the state and say that's a text. Um, and I might want to keep track of the reason. And I'm going to make, make that a text as well. I might also want to keep track of when this, when this comment was made or when this variance was explained and who did it. So I can add different columns as required. Um, and these are all going to be columns that are now available in Tableau. So if I cut back to Tableau, um, and go into this workbook. I see that I have this sales targets data source. And this is that data source that, um, that we connected to earlier that's allowing us to actually establish those targets. And it's just that, you know, I think the process there is to create a new data table and to add it as a data source. It's a Postgres data source. So just like adding any other data source and is now available for you to start adding data in your Tableau workbook. And so for our targets, we have gone through and uh, we wanted to add these as a blend relationship. So if I look at my, um, if I look at my variants, I see that I'm tracking the sum of the sales against the target that was set in the state. And so to recap what we've done there is we've created a new data source. We've added it to our Tableau workbook, and we have got an Anvil UI that allows us to start to change that. So we're going to do the same thing now with variants. We have our variance explanation, which is our state, the explanation, and we want to do a timestamp for when that was given. Um, and now we can work on our UI. So the first thing we want to do is maybe show somebody the state that they uh, are actually working with. And so Anvil gives us a drag and drop UI that we can use to start uh, adding to our, uh, to our extension. Uh, so let's say this is the state. And I'll add another one.
And then I'm going to call this label state. So I've done two things here. This one, I've started to change the actual, actual text. And this, I've changed the variable name. So if I look behind the hood here, we have some code uh, that's Python that's going to be specific to uh, this web form. Uh, and since I just added that label, I can now get from self.label the state, that label that I just added. And this is how I'm going to start interacting with these components. We'll come back to that. Um, but I'll point out that you know, there's a pretty good autocomplete here. And the self.dashboard is what's going to, this is the like, entry point to that open source library that I was referencing. So from here, I could like, get my data sources. I might get my data source by name. I might get my worksheets. I might want to get like uh, the settings in the dashboard. All of the different aspects of the dashboard, my filters, are all exposed to me here so that I can start really working with what's going on in that dashboard uh, pretty quickly and easily. So we've started to build our UI. And uh, we can now load our dashboard. And I've set this up so the dashboard is actually going to load um, from Anvil. This is possible if you're using Tableau Server. If you're using desktop, you can download the extension in there. Uh, that's really, it works either way. But we see here that we've got our explaining variants and we've got our state. So we're off to the races in terms of starting to build the UI that we need to build for this thing. So we have the state and we wanted to keep track of the reason for the variance. So I'm going to add a drop down here. That's going to be uh, all of the different reasons we want to give for somebody to say, hey, why did I miss my sales? So I'm going to throw it out there. Why might we miss our sales target? I'm going to call on you, Chris. We are, good question. We are working with Superstore, the famous, uh, I think they sell furniture and clothing, if I remember the data correctly, Electro and electronics. <laughs> Wood shortage. Great. <laughs> Did you have one, Chris? I can just call everyone Chris. Right. <laughs> Pedro. Pedro. Raise interest rates. Any others? One more. Salesman. Salesman. <laughs> went south. Great. So we've given our cup a couple of different reasons uh, that we might. Uh, miss our sales target. So if I load my dashboard again, I see I've, I can now pick between the different explanations that we just gave. Now, of course, that's not going to do anything. We haven't wired that up to the state, but that'll be the next step is we want to say when somebody makes a selection, we want to them ask them to give us a reason. So that's going to be pretty straightforward, as we'll see. First, I'm just going to include a placeholder here, pick a reason. And so we're going to go into our code. And this is what I said earlier. It's most common that we want to respond to an event. And so in this case, when someone makes a selection, we want to prompt them to give a reason. So we'll go to our selection change callback. And we get our uh, data source with the following marks selected. And we know that the state there, it's the state or the province. So we're going to say self.selection. We're going to create a new variable. That's the event. I can just copy paste here, selected event. And uh, that's going to give me uh, the selection. I'm actually just going to take the zero index here. But that's then the thing that got selected on the dashboard. Uh, and when we then come over here, we actually need to add a new button here. For us to save the reason. And now, when somebody clicks this button, we want to add to our data that that selection was made. And so the way we do that is we go to app tables, which is going to give us access to all of these different uh, tables that we've added here. And we're saying our variance explanations, we want to add a row. And our reason is the 
dropdown that we created has a selected value. And the state is going to be our selection. Uh, and the state province. We, again, we know from our dashboard here. So if I load this again, and now I think Oregon, oh, I had myself. So we'll say Oregon has a wood shortage. And we can save the reason. So now if we go back to our data tables for variant, variant, we see that Oregon has a wood shortage. And that is true if we go back to our main dashboard now. That um, we actually need to add the reason, don't we? So what we've done in this case is we've actually done a cross database join to the variance reason that we had. So we have our variance reasons table that we were just looking at. And um, we want to be tying into that. Um, but that cross database join is going to be how we then are able to pull in those variance reasons uh, to be able to then update them. So if we go. And we'll see right in here that we can pull in our reasons uh, for uh, any variance that might exist. And we've uh, so in this case we've got a reason of the customer's lost. I've got my uh, pointed this one at the wrong. It's actually not pointed to these data tables, but I hope that. Communicates the, the intention. So there we go. What did we? What, let's just maybe look at that code one more time. What did we do? We captured the selection when someone made uh, when someone selected something on the dashboard, and we wrote that to a data to a data table when someone clicked that button that we added, and we created a really basic UI uh, with some of these drag and drop components that let us add that web form. That's going to be the thing that lets people. Uh, again, take that action from the dashboard. In this case, where is the Postgres SQL database located? Is that something you set up before? So that is, um, I, I'm right now in the Anvil SAS. And so that comes part and parcel to that. Yeah, so it's um, like when I added this table for, when I add tables here, that's then uh, being added to a Postgres database that's like for your application in the context of, of your Anvil app. So yeah, it's kind of one of the one of the nice parts about working with Anvil as opposed to a traditional stack is you don't really need to think about, I need a web service. I need a database. I need uh, you know all of those different components kind of get rolled up into this thing that then gives you like a way to craft web forms, a way to store some data, and a way to run Python in the browser, and Python on the server side, too, if you're doing anything that requires that. From a security yeah, perspective. From a security perspective, where's the data? Is yeah. Who has access? Yeah. So let's um. Uh, so what, you know, when I said that Anvil can be, uh, suffice to say, Anvil's got both like the SaaS version, which is in their private cloud, like Baker Tilly. We're like an accounting consulting firm and have no interest in having someone else manage our stuff. So we have our own Anvil enterprise. And so when we're adding applications, it's the same you know, developer experiences that we were experiencing here, but it's all in our private cloud. And so we don't, you know, that from our perspective, that's just like, that was one of the reasons we were really struggling with extensions at first is because we just don't have any, we can't based on who we are, give our data to other people. So yeah, for us, we have an Anvil enterprise instance on our private cloud. And so like that Postgres database is in our, in our space. But if, you know, like we're probably starting to move more in the direction of, it, of embracing SaaS and that's where Anvil X on their Anvil SaaS offering is certainly a lot easier and a faster to move. Um, 
And they do, so we just did this. Uh, and so Anvil, you know, as a SaaS offering, I think your first 10 viewers are free and, and they have some other bundling there. But my goal today was to try to convince you that extensions are for you, that it's doable, that it's not a bridge too far. Uh, so I hope I've done that. I'll be really keen to talk more with folks uh, after this at the happy hour or um, uh, else if you want to give reach out to me, LinkedIn's probably the best, but I'll, I'll leave my email as well. Um, there's a bunch of handy parts about Anvil X. I think you already mentioned that data, like that comes part and parcel to Anvil. Uh, it gives great logging. There's a bunch, it gives the one-click deployment. So, you know, I sort of started with a extension to try to make this um, a little bit faster, but um, to create like a net new extension, I would say create a Tableau extension. And it's now like, this is my blank canvas. So some of those like selection callbacks are already here for me. I can see like, here's my selection function. Uh, my data table is empty, but if I want to add a new data table, then I do that. And this data table is now like your data table in this application for your extension and private to you. Um, so it's pretty, pretty easy. It gives you like, if you create a mistake, you can print stuff to your logs and that's all going to be made pretty easy for you. Uh, got those built-in data tables. Um, there's user management, GitHub integration, all sorts of fun bells and whistles like that that matter a lot as you start to get more into production. Um, but really what I wanted to leave you with today is that uh, enriching the data in your dashboards can be hugely valuable and extensions can be built with Python with minimal code that really do enable that. Uh, so, you know, it's tons of opportunity. I really hope uh, you get started. Uh, I'll just leave you with the T-Rex jacket, which is that open source project I talked about. Um, there's gonna be tons of resources on how to get started here. Uh, there's a few tutorials on building your first extension, a bunch more context as like what's actually going on under the hood. Um, but I think I'll probably close up. I really think the best way to get started is to try it. So if you're interested, I really encourage you to go to this. Uh, your ex jacket and try one of those tutorials, uh, see how it goes. Uh, I swear, you'll get through it. <laughs> uh, there's some case studies. But yeah, really hope to hear from you. If, uh, I'm also more than, you know, we, we offer, we'd love to, you know, come in and do some thinking with you guys as to how, how can these help or, or how can we help you get started. But um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yeah. Well, First of all, thank you, Dan. That was amazing. That was uh, that was great. I, I, you know, you really did. You've done a lot of extensions, and it's it's something that's uh, definitely you made it look real simple. I guess uh, I my miss is, but when did you first get introduced to Anvil X? Like, how, and how? I guess. Um, so, Anvil X um, has been. So we've been working with Anvil for quite a while, uh, and we started to break ground on using them for extensions. Um, in 2020-ish. So that's been, they, they, that's a product that they've been building out over time to, to add some of those bells and whistles that are Tableau specific. Uh, we've been like, we've been using Anvil for like traditional web application development longer than that. But the Anvil X product is, is tied into the, is, is tied into Tableau to make that part of it easier. Yeah. Um, I guess, so, uh, you know, it, it does look pretty easy. How long would you say like someone, with some pretty decent Python skills, how long would it take them to get up and running, you know, and, and get familiar with Anvil X and you know, get their first extension out there? Uh, our our we our speed run on building a chat extension that lets you like record um, comments in an application is like seven minutes. <laughs> so we we I think there's a you know. There's a few different uh, pillars that that you kind of like learning curves they need to get through, and Python is one of them. Um, and then the Anvil framework is another. Uh, but I think that with those knocked down, the there's just a lot of room for. I think the reality is a lot of the most useful extensions are just pretty straightforward. And I, I mean, I think the variance explanation. I think I should actually talk about that maybe. You, I think you probably have all of the building blocks to do this, where you know you click on an extension, or you click on a data point, and uh, that is going to prompt you with a user form with a drop down that's got some reasons, 
that gets persistent to a database that updates the underlying data. And so you've got the building blocks there, right? It's, um, and I don't mean to minimize, I think there, there are like, as we have some very large applications that would have taken us a long time to build. And as I start to, you know, the healthcare analytics, this one is, you know, quite a lot more involved. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces here. Um, but I, you know, I think that, uh, I guess I would just tell you to go try it. There's a, the value override is a great one to start with. See how it goes. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, how many, um, how many of these do you guys have in your production environment? You know, I think what's interesting is that we, uh, have a hard time building dashboards without them now. <laughs> so we got a lot. <laughs> It's cool. I mean, it's great because you it's a call to action and, and that's what you want in a dashboard. So that's that's pretty yeah. amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Um uh, open up the floor. Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll, we can repeat the question. We'll, we'll, we'll repeat sure. yeah. So when people who've got an individual has built something, mm -hmm. they move on. How do you pass on the care and feeding in that kind of situation? Um, so, you know, for us, uh, we have a team of folks that are kind of immersed in this. And so it's, I, I think the answer is probably not all that different from any other, uh, solution. Uh, we try to document, uh, we try to enforce standards in how they're built so that when you come into an extension, someone else built, it looks pretty familiar. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the bigger picture there is, um, broadening use cases so that that there is like a network internally. I think that the biggest risk is if you got one guy who knows how to do it or one gal who knows how to do it, then, then there's a exposure there. But, um, you know, for us, I think people come in and out, it's just the reality of it. Uh, and I think as long as we're following pretty consistent design patterns and we are, which, which again, that like T-Rex jacket kind of enforces a lot of, there's just a huge amount of plumbing and mechanics that get abstracted there. So you don't need to, do a lot of that, you know, I think I'll just pull it up one more time. So, you know, someone makes a selection, you want to do something, well, go look for your selection, call back and see what's done. But it, yeah, I, I will say um, related to what you're asking is like version control and, and quality control uh, and Anvil applications are Git repositories under the hood. So I would say that we're pretty, like, we're pretty mature. We've done it for a while. And so like nothing goes into production without having gone through a formal QA, QC process. That's like nothing different than something you would see where else Git is in use. Um, but. Um, we have some big, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, it's probably a good conversation for happy hour. <laughs> The question uh, was, do we uh, do we use agile in some of our development processes? Yeah. Any other questions? I think Chris had a question. Yeah. Okay. Homer, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, who do we see? Oh, I see a few chats. Are there any questions? If someone doesn't know Python, uh, that was from William Dufresne. Um, so, you know, Python, I, I would really encourage them to go try it. I mean, I, I think for me, um, I started using Python in 2019, 2018, and it was, uh, I guess it felt like a natural extension from what I'd been doing. Like I, I was genuine when I said like, how many people have written an if statement? Cause that's like, that's kind of, you know, there, it's, it, that is the, there, there's a lot that starts feeling familiar, uh, when, when you kind of, when you start diving in and now there, there is like, uh, there's definitely a learning curve there. And I think there's one, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that Python is this ocean. And so while we can get a lot of cool stuff done knowing just what I've shared today, that is, you know, you're, you're touching a tiny little sliver of what's out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that it is, it is, um, you know, it, Anvil X enables you to build extensions with Python. Uh, so it is part of the, you know, it's a, it's, that's kind of the, the key thing to go learn. Um, and Eve was asking about separate pricing. So I'll just direct you to the Anvil X webpage. Um, it does, I think their price is, uh, $10 per viewer. Um, yeah, uh, here you go. Um, 
per month. And that's folks that actually view the dashboard. So it's not like you need to buy one of these for every viewer on your server instance. It's just for the folks actually interacting with the extensions. Very cool. Um, one last question, I guess you mentioned the uh, chat extension. Yeah. Uh, what are some cool ones that you worked on recently or some ones you just have in your head? You're like, I can't wait to build this one out. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a trope, but I've always thought it would be, I mean, I guess Tableau Pulse is already doing this, uh, but having like integrating some of the different uh, like large language models into it. So like one thing that we've talked a lot about is like, if we're keeping track of variants because our customers are being lost, then we, can we start like prompting people with like, here are some strategies that you could do. Uh, or similarly, like customer churn is a really big topic for many of our customers. And so like being able to identify and then starting to route people down, like route, you know, service agents down specific paths based on what the data is telling us would be really, really cool. Uh, we haven't built that one yet, but uh, <laughs> you asked. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, uh, thank, thank you very much again, Dan. Dan that was a amazing presentation. presentation. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right. Appreciate it. I feel well, like, you. Uh, thank you. you know, there were a couple of extensions I was really excited to share that don't seem to be working. So. Yeah, no, no, that was great. That was great. Oh, um, do we have time for one more? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Um, so I'll just preface by saying that um, there's a few extensions that um, you can just drop right into your workbooks to try. The chat extensions is one of them. So you can get on a, if you go to Anvil X and create a new app, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, you can start from a template. Tableau chat extension is one of them. Um, so when you create this, it is creating a new, it's creating a new app that is yours. So it's important to know because like your data is not being commingled with someone else's or anything like that. It's now, and you can start making changes to it. Uh, but what that extension specifically does is it lets us like click on a state and then, um, um, <laughs> what I get uh, and actually start to keep track of um, what the other comments are that are related to uh, basically have conversations in your dashboards with other people. Oh, well, that's very cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like if anyone wants to do that over happy hour, I'd be delighted to have that extension. <laughs> yeah, we'll that. we'll uh, take that one offline. But, but I just to emphasize, it's like literally go start a chat extension, download the Manasa, push it into your Tableau workbook and you've got a chat extension and then you can start like the, i think the pr the point behind some of these templates is to here's a value override another one is to give you like a starting point so it's it's probably not going to work for your use case out of the gate because your use case is going to be specific to you but it's going to give you a lot of that piping and a, and a very good starting point so you can take that and start to you know make it your own based on whatever your use cases are all right. Well, thank you again, Dan. Yeah, that was that was awesome. So, um, yeah, I uh, I appreciate you making the trip all the way here. You know, yeah. Welcome to Austin. Yeah.